What do you got there? A story about very small things? Yep. We're talking about millions of tiny organisms that you come into contact with every day, but some of them could have a nasty surprise waiting for you and be really harmful. I got one that fits that bill. I got a chain letter recently that stated a woman had died from a deadly pathogen she contracted drinking from a soda can tainted with rat urine. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Well, let's get to it. Okay. Wherever there are rats, filth follows. But are soda cans really contaminated by rat pee? And if they are, could drinking directly from the can be deadly? So how do you want to test this? Well, you know, this myth is so pervasive, we need to get it right. And that means we need to have a nice, large sample size. Okay, and I think we should start with a positive pee control so that we know what rat urine looks like, we know how to test for it, we know how to know when it's there. And we need to just get a whole passel of rats, a bunch of cans, and let nature take its course, huh? Is passel the collective noun for rats? I don't know. Well, actually, it's a horde, swarm, rabble, or pack of rats. But before they get started... But I don't understand. How is it possible that rat pee could kill you? Yes, it's not rat pee itself that could kill you. It's the fact that rat pee could potentially carry both leptospirosis and hantavirus that makes it potentially dangerous. I see. According to this myth, deadly pathogens transfer from rat through rat urine to soda can, and from there to people. So first, they're starting with a positive control. Now normally we certify our tasty, tasty Mythbusters Cola as both a life-extending elixir and rat pee free. Until today. Today a thousand of these puppies are going to be set up as a rat run to be used as what we like to call a control for exposure to rat pee. Adam and Jamie will hone their rat pee tracking technique before moving on to test real world soda cans. So why go to all this trouble to clean the cans just to have rats pee on them? Well, it's because all we want to find is rat pee, not random dirt or other false positives that may be introduced into our test. So we scrub every single one. And I gotta say, looking at a thousand cans, there's a lot of dirt to be cleaned up. Now that the cans are pristine, let the rodent incontinence begin. This little guy right here is Rattus norwegicus, otherwise known as the dwarf rat or the sewer rat, the brown rat or the common rat. Uh, they're the dominant rat species in the northern hemisphere, and they were held responsible for the Black Plague in the Middle Ages, which killed tens of millions of people. However, technically, it was the fleas they carried, not the rats themselves, that caused the plague. And now it's their urine taking the blame. But is it deadly? The rats aren't shy in helping the guys find out. Oh, I see some rat urine on a can. Nice. This is awesome. This is one of those sounds that you'll only hear on Mythbusters. The sound of 40 rats on a thousand cans. <laughs> <laughs> and after 90 minutes of the pitter-patter of ratty feet... The rat party is wrapped. <laughs> Let's put them back in their cages. There's certainly rat pee on those cans. And the first tracking technique, blacklight. Did you know that rat pee fluoresces under blacklight? Well, that's the next thing we're going to do. We're going to get some blacklights and go take a look for them. I feel like I'm one of those police procedural dramas. And with plenty of glowing puddles. It's gotta be urine. Lights up like a pinball machine. Oh, this one is so gross, look at that. <laughs> the boys are positive that the black light is the perfect way to pinpoint the pee. Well, that's gross. I guess it's time to collect our real world random samples now. Well, we better get started. We've got a thousand cans to collect from all over the city. A thousand? Okay, let's do it. 